We're not meant to white knuckle love and stuff down our offense and stuff down our annoyance and just get through it and put on a, an act. We are meant to become it. Read this with me. 1 John 4, 16 says, God is love and all who live in love live in God and God lives in them. And as we live in God, our love grows more perfect. So we will not be afraid on the day of judgment, right? On that great day of separation, we're not going to be afraid. Why? We can face him with confidence because we live like Jesus here in the world, because we've been transformed to live into love like Jesus. See, God is love. So when we live in love, we live in God and God lives in us. And as God lives in us, we're transformed into the same image of God who is love. So we are literally becoming love. Love is no longer something that we merely do. We don't turn it on and off. It's someone that we become. So loving people isn't something we have to do through gritted teeth. It's something that starts to flow naturally from who we are because it's literally just who we are. We love people because it is our identity. Now, let me be perfectly clear about this parable, okay? This is not a message of, of works-based salvation. This is not Jesus saying, okay, if you meet your love quota, if you love enough people, then I'll let you into heaven. Really tempting to read it that way. That's not what he's saying at all. The point that Jesus is trying to make is simply this. The greatest and purest form of evidence of someone who truly loves God with all their heart, soul, and strength is found in whether or not they love their neighbor, whether they love people around them. I love how Charles Spurgeon puts it in this quote. He says, when they stand before the judgment seat, the bare idea of there being any excellence in what they have done will be new to the saints, or in this case, the sheep. For they have formed a very lowly estimate of their own performances, and what they have done seems to them too faulty to be commended. What does that mean? They're, they're humble. They don't think highly of themselves. The saints, they fed the hungry and clothed the naked because it gave them much pleasure to do so. They did it because they couldn't help doing it. Their new nature impelled them to it. They did it because it was their delight to do good and was as much their element as water for a fish or the air for a bird. They did good for Christ's sake because it was the sweetest thing in the world to do anything for Jesus. When we live in love, we live in God. And when we live in God, his, his love is made more perfect in us. And it is the sweetest thing in the world to do anything for someone that he bled and died to save. When we love people, we love God. That's what we need to take from this. When we love people, we love God. And when we love God, we love people. And when we love people, we love God. It's this circular relationship that's designed to uh, perpetuate itself into the day of Christ's return. When we love people, we love God. It's, it's our way of expressing love to God. It's, it's an act of worship. We say it around here all the time that uh, worship is simply love expressed. We express our love to God and thereby we worship him. So one of the best ways that we can possibly do that is to love the ones that he loves. Why is it equally important that we love our neighbor and that we love God? Well, when we love people, we love God. But check this out. And this is where everything turns over. When we love people, it's God's way of loving people. Think about this. When we love people, God is loving people. 1 John 4, 12 says, no one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us, and his love is brought to full expression in us. What is he saying? God isn't here on the earth. We can't see him, right? The ones that need him, they can't see him, but they can experience him. And the way that they experience his love is through the way that we love each other. So when we love people, we love God. And when we love God, we love people. When we love people, God is loving people. 
God's love is being experienced that the, for those people. And they can taste and see that the Lord is good. And when they taste and see that the Lord is good and his love endures forever, they start to love God too. And when they start to love God, they naturally just start loving people because that's the relationship. And then they start loving people and those people experience the love of God and they taste and see that the Lord is good and then they can't help but love him because what's not to love about him? And so when they love him, they start loving people who start loving God, who start loving people. And the road goes on forever and the party never ends. This is God's plan to bring the kingdom of heaven to the earth. Loving people is the way that the kingdom of light is going to invade a world of darkness. Why is it equally important that we love people? Because loving people is your purpose. Loving people is the plan. Loving people is how God is how people are going to experience God. Loving people is your purpose. You thought that your work was your purpose. You thought that your work was your purpose, but actually it's just an excuse to get around the people at your work so that they can experience the love of God. You thought being a mom is your purpose when actually it's to love those kids so well that they see Jesus in you that they can't help but fall in love with God and live a life full of loving people. <laughs> loving people is your purpose. It brings purpose and weight and beauty and glory into every human interaction that you have in this world. Every word that you say, every tip that you leave, every thought that you just keep to yourself. This is God's plan. The future generations for countless lost sheep hangs in the balance and the king has called you and I to go out and find them and love them all the way home. Loving people is your purpose. It's why you're still here. It's why the end hasn't happened yet. There are so many people in the world that don't know that there is a God in heaven that loves them more than they could possibly imagine, and they're never going to know it if we don't go and love them. Teresa of Avila wrote this poem that captures this idea perfectly and beautifully and simply. She says this, Christ has no body but yours, no hands, no feet on earth but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body now but yours. A few weeks ago, Andy and I were on a date I uh, went to dinner to our favorite place, downtown West Palm Beach, and afterwards we were walking down Clematis Street to go get some ice cream. And man, I could smell those waffle cones being baked like three blocks off. It was a glorious moment when we were stopped by a young homeless man asking for money. And usually we don't give money because money's usually not what needed, but Andy and I made a decision a long time ago that we would never not feed someone that was hungry. So we said, I don't have any money, but I can get you some dinner. And so he took me up on the offer. And so we walked in and there's a pasta place right next door and he ordered some food and we stood outside and I started to hear his story a little bit. Now the flesh will say this, I'm on a date. This is me time. I've got two young kids. Time away with just me and my wife is very valuable. Not to mention babysitting is super expensive. Time is money. I'm being interrupted. I can smell the waffle cones. But the Holy Spirit says, yeah, but he's mine. So I start talking to him and he goes on to tell us that he has been incarcerated over 10 times. That his whole life, his dad had been in jail. And just a year ago, as soon as his dad got out of jail, he was killed. And then just two days before that, he had just lost his best friend. He was depressed. He was lonely. He was hungry. And everything in, in the flesh will say, 
yeah, but it's about you. But the Holy Spirit says, yeah, but I love him just as much as I love you. He just doesn't know it yet. Will you tell him? And so I started talking to him a little bit more. He was wearing a cross around his neck. I said, do you know anything about that cross? He says, no, this is just the last thing my dad gave me before he was killed. And I'm trying to hold it close. I hold it tight every night so that nobody steals it. And I say, well, maybe, just maybe he wants you to know the man that came out of heaven to die on that tree. There's a God in heaven that loves you and he knows your name and he weeps with you and this was not his plan for you and he has a hope and a future for you and he loves you and he loves you and he loves you. Loving people is our purpose. When we love people, we love God and when we love people, God loves people. God wanted this young man to know that there is a God in heaven that hasn't given up on him yet. And there is no way that he would ever known if we hadn't stopped and just had a conversation with him. You starting to get it? Loving people is the plan. It's how the kingdom is going to advance. And the king of all creation thinks so highly of you and so highly of me that he's placed it in our hands. He's given us the great and high calling and the good work of going out and finding those people and loving them so that they will know that there is a God that knows their name, that knows their story, that knows their background and is madly in love with them because he wants as many sheep to come home as will listen. My goal today was not to condemn you. It's to encourage you. It's to spur you on. Because you know what? This is a church that loves really well. This is the feedback that we get all the time. New people come in and they just say, I just, the people just loved us so well. There's just such a welcoming environment here. Talked about love week and all you're doing. I want to spur you on. The application is really simple of today's message. The first is this. Keep loving God. Just keep loving God. Keep worshiping him daily. Stay in, your, stay in the word. Open the word daily. Get into his truth. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal all that he has for you in that. Keep the worship music playing around the house. Keep it playing in your car. Stay praying. Pray without ceasing. He wants a relationship with you. Just keep loving him. And then as you live in love, you live in God. Remember this. This is the second thing. God lives in you. So wherever you go, there he is. Maybe today you're in Publix. You're going to go and do your every week, your what used to be mundane grocery shopping. But today you're going to remember that the God of all creation lives in you and that he's empowered you to go and love a lost world. So you walk in and you say, Holy Spirit, show me who you want me to love today. Maybe it's that lady over there needs some help paying for her groceries. Maybe it's that kid over there that can't reach the cereal box that just needs a little bit of help. Maybe it's that girl over there down aisle seven that just needs an encouraging word. Maybe it's the mom that's overwhelmed that has kids just everywhere throwing everything into her cart that just needs somebody to say, you're doing a really great job and God sees you. I don't know what it is, but that's the beauty of living a life with Jesus is that it's dynamic and it's active and he'll show you. And can I be honest with you? Loving people is really fun. Get out there and do it today. Get out there and do it this week. It's not just a week out of the year. It's not just first Saturday service, not a day out of the month. It's an everyday opportunity, gift, blessing, and privilege to love the ones that Jesus bled and died to save.